Oh, good morning, everybody. <laughs> Welcome into the flagship podcast. I am Chip Brown of Horns 247.com. Joined, as always, by the managing editor of Horns 247, Taylor Estes. And Taylor, it is almost 120 on Sunday morning after Texas pulls away for a 41 20 victory over UTSA Jeff trailer and the Roadrunners in a game that Texas trailed 17 to seven in the second quarter after the Roadrunners um, scored a touchdown captured an onside kick two plays later they throw a double pass trick play touchdown to go up 17 to seven and according to Steve Sarkeesian no one blinked Taylor. Yeah, that's a that's a surprising thing. Or I shouldn't say surprising. I feel like this is becoming a little bit more of the norm, Chip, with this team. You know, I think I think it's surprising to see it a little bit early in the season because the when adversity struck last year, it just s- snowballed out of control, basically. And so uh, I, I almost feel like this was kind of a culture win. You kind of saw it a little bit more and back to back weeks, to be honest, between this game and then the Alabama game too. I feel like you're starting to see like that culture talk we heard all off season was real and it was legit. And uh, it showed up today for sure. Well, Steve Sarkeesian said that Texas was going to have to run the football in this game because they got a quarterback in Hudson card. Who's allegedly got a high ankle sprain. He didn't look like he had a high ankle sprain on a 32 yard run on second and 22 easily. His, best play of the game but they do lean on the run not just Hudson Card's 32 yard run uh but Bijan Robinson breaks loose finally goes over 100 yards rushing in a big way including a 78 yard a career best 78 yard touchdown run in the third quarter um Bijan Robinson uh saying after the game that Steve Sarkeesian told him this run is going to hit this way and you're going to have a chance to break this thing. And Bijan said it hit exactly as he said. And that was part of the reason Taylor that Steve Sarkeesian was so pumped. I mean, he was like overjoyed pumping his fist coming out on the field to meet Bijan Robinson uh, in part because apparently Sarkeesian said, run through him on this drive and then told him exactly how that 78 yard touchdown run would hit. Yeah. I mean, he talked about that in post game um, and his post game press conference too. He said that like, you know, kind of the run game took a little bit of time to kind of get going. And he was like, just stick with it because one of these is going to break loose. It's going to break through. And that kind of um, was a little bit of a the dam breaking loose, to be honest, for this Texas offense, this Texas team in this game. I feel like that run, that 78-yard touchdown run, as you said, was is now his career best um, at the college level, surpassing his uh, former career best 75-yard run from the 2020 uh, season. So, yeah, this that was a huge game-changing, momentum-shifting type of play, Chip. And um, I feel like obviously Bijan Robinson's never really been the type of guy that we're sitting here wondering if he's going to, you know, let adversity break bring him down. Like he's not, you know, he he's one of the best players in college football, arguably the best running back in college football, too. And Jeff Trailer talked about that actually leading into this game, that this is the best running back in college football. And just seeing just the way that everything seemed to change after that huge touchdown run. It was almost like it was um, like a little bit contagious, I think, um, for the entire team, not just the offense. Yeah, I mean, um, that touchdown broke open a 17-17 game, made it 24-17 Texas. Then on the next drive by UTSA, we had the crazy situation where it looked like it was a, a touchdown pass. They ruled Deshaun Jameson, pushed the receiver out of the end zone. He came back in. They ruled it a catch, but upon further review, he didn't have control of the football. They have to kick a field goal. It's 24-20 at that point. And then we get the play of the game. 
Jade Baron, the uh, 44 yard interception return. Uh, Frank Harris throws the pass a little high. It tips off the hand of his tight end. His bowling ball, 285 pound tight end. Um, Cardenas, who I love that dude. He had huge plays uh, for UTSA as they built that 17-7 lead. But that ball tipped off his hand right into the hands of Jade Barron. 44-yard interception return for a touchdown. That makes it 31-20, Taylor. And that was a little bit of a dagger because after that, um, the defense came through again. Huge third down stop on Frank Harris. Huge fourth down stop. Um, Keandre Coburn collapses the pocket. Frank Harris throws the ball. I mean, it should have been caught, let's be honest. But uh, Zachary Franklin maybe sees Diamante Tucker Dorsey closing in on him. He drops the ball. And Texas uh, takes it back down the field. And, um, you know, including that 32-yard run by Hudson Card and, and puts the game away you know, for all practical purposes and Texas ends up winning this thing 41 to 20 in a game that really, uh, as we just mentioned, I mean, John a Barron's pick six comes with 18 seconds left in the third quarter, Taylor, uh, mm -hmm. Texas dominated that fourth quarter, but this was a tight game, uh, until 18 seconds left in the third quarter. Yeah. I mean, that third quarter, that was when Texas took the lead back, you know, as, as, a with B. John Robinson's run, that J Jade Barron interception pick six was huge, absolutely huge for it. And then the other thing, too, when we, you talk about Hudson Card's scramble on second and 20, was it second and 22, I believe second it was? Second and 22. I mean, that that kid, I, th I feel like Steve Sarkeesian said it best um, in his post-game press conference. He's He said, he's like, this is a kid who... When I say he bleeds burnt orange and white, he bleeds burnt orange and white. And that's, that's a, those are, you know, he, he could barely put weight on his ankle just last week and he had not been fully practicing really. He started, he was progressing, you know, in his recovery and C. Sarkeesian said, you know, up to Thursday essentially. But I mean, that, that was a huge, huge play. And then, you know, it also helps set up B. John Robinson running in a 41 yard touchdown. Um, that was, I believe in the fourth quarter, but yeah, I mean, this was just a, this was a team that played together and that fought together and played through adversity. And it really showed up in a big way. And I feel like if Texas can get healthy first, that's the biggest thing right now, but if they can continue to play as one, as a team, as they have been, for the last the start basically since the start of the season then this is a team that could you know rattle some or you know ruffle some feathers in the big 12 race because the big 12 is all over the place a little bit right now uh it seems like at least and my god kansas we're sitting here talking about texas kansas three and oh like you never know what's going to happen in this big 12 this year but texas has shown I feel like week in and week week out for the first three games of the season that they can hang with the best of them yeah yeah, and you and I were talking, you know, right before we uh, started rolling on on the uh, pod, which, by the way, Sam Acho cornered us uh, in the press box tonight to say that our flagship podcast is the only podcast he listens to and loves it. Thanks, Sam. Appreciate yes, that. Yes, thank you, Sam. That that was an awesome thing. I was not expecting that. <laughs> Wish we had a little camera crew for a testimonial. Um, but I'm not sure that Texas will face a better quarterback the rest of the season uh, than Frank Harris, who, uh, you know, I said on this uh, podcast with you, Taylor, that UTSA's receivers weren't going to drop passes like Alabama's receivers did. And then Zachary Franklin did drop that fourth down pass, but they were catching everything early on. And Frank Harris was going up and down the field. He was 12 of 15 passing at halftime and had converted five of seven third downs. I mean, he was doing whatever he wanted to do. Uh, the Texas defense came to life in the second half. And then DeMarvin Overshawn has probably two of the best plays you'll ever see where he makes a diving pass breakup. Then he curls right behind a defensive lineman and is face-to-face -face with Frank Harris and sacks him for an eight-yard 
loss and you're thinking, okay, huge play. UTSA is going to punt and oh no, it's targeting on DeMarvian Overshone. He's ejected from the game right now. He faces a suspension from the first half of Texas's big 12 opener next week at Texas tech. Now there is a new rule that allows uh, a team to appeal uh, that targeting call to the league office. The league office will review it. And if they agree with your appeal, they will uh, pull back the suspension. So Texas clearly is going to appeal this uh, because on that hit, DeMarvin Overshone did not bow the crown of his helmet. He was face to face with Frank Harris, chest to chest, and made a great play. And because their face face masks hit, uh, they call targeting, which give me a break. So yeah. Yeah. we'll see if the Big 12, this is a new rule. We'll see if the Big 12 um, throws down its first uh, appeal of the season as it pertains to DeMarvian Overshow. Yeah, and that was something like, I, you. I mean, I, I don't think any player – wants to hit somebody in the head like and, and they don't want to get hit in the head either this is just where the targeting rule for everything that it's supposed to be to be good and i get it and it, it's an important thing to look out for player safety especially in such a um aggressive and type of sport like football is i mean there was nothing demarvian overshawn could have done to change the way he yeah, other hit. than like crane his neck backwards yeah and then what does that do for him? I mean, right. that that's a dangerous move too. He gets I mean, hit in I, the neck. Yeah, and and gets his, you know, head whipped back. I mean, I understand the the logic behind the targeting, you know, flags. I totally get it. But this was one of those where it's like, man, like this is probably going to be called or you know, stand for targeting, but it wasn't targeting. I mean, like just because their helmets hit does not mean that it's targeting and it intentionally hitting you know, um, or trying to hurt, you know, another player. And Steve Sarkeesian did, was asked about it, you know, what was the, the explanation of why um, it, they confirmed the call for targeting. And apparently what he said was Frank Harris at that point was a defenseless player. And that is why it was called for targeting. I mean, it, that's it's such just, a tough call with a guy who can is. run and move like Frank Harris. Yeah. It's not like, Quinn Ewers, who does it, who's not going to use his legs really. And, you know, I mean, it's just there with, with a mobile quarterback, you have to go in, you know, and it's like if they move it, and it's the same thing with like, even like skill players, like that's the one thing with the targeting rule that always kind of gets me. It's like their body changes position as the defensive player, like on defense, not defenseless defense player is already going in for a tackle. And just because they change the offensive player changes they're you know where they are then it gets called for targeting yet somehow offense you know players on offense can run the ball and lower their head and just absolutely destroy a defenseless defensive player and they never get called for targeting it's like oh, we'll call it both ways then you know it's like there's there's been plenty of calls or plenty of times where you've seen offensive players like intentionally try to just let like lower their head and lower the helmet and and target a defensive player and it never will get flat because it's just like an offensive penalty or a penalty on defense for offensive players. I mean, it's just, it's unfortunate. You, it's going to be interesting to see if the big 12 will overturn it. I feel like anybody that watched that play would be like, they should, because it's not, it was not egregious. He didn't launch. He, you know, didn't lower and hit with the crown of his helmet. I mean, just everything what the targeting rule is supposed to be by definition, it really wasn't there except for their face masks hit each other. Yeah. Um, it was not a great night for the Texas defense, but they played great when they had to, they gave up a bunch of yards. As we mentioned, um, they gave up a bunch of third down conversions, nine of 16. Um, and Texas committed, nine penalties for 88 yards. Uh, none of that is a positive, but they came up with some big plays. Um, I thought it was interesting. Deshaun Jameson uh, got beat for 
a touchdown, but the touchdown was called back uh, because of a penalty on UTSA in an illegal formation. Or no, they hadn't. They weren't set. Illegal motion. Uh, they had two players in motion and and didn't get set before uh, the ball snapped. But Steve Sarkeesian took Deshaun Jameson out of the game after that play and said, hey, relax, play your game, and and let's let's go get it. You know, we need it. And Deshaun Jameson played really well after that, had a huge pass breakup on a on a possible touchdown pass later in the game. Um and you know, we talked about the the pick six by Jotty Barron, some really good um, you know, collapsing of the pocket by Keandre Coburn. We talked about this last week, Taylor with the defensive linemen penetrating now, instead of just trying to hold and read and react, we're seeing some really good play up front and it's leading to some good stuff for the guys in the back end. So not a great game for the Texas defense, but they played great when they had to, especially the, the pick six by Jade Barron that really helped break this game open because, um, Look, this was this was a, a real mindset, like you said, culture win. And they got to go on the road. And they're going to play a Texas Tech team that lost tonight to NC State that's really good at home. And this defense has to travel until this quarterback situation uh, gets righted. Yeah, it does. And I, I will say this. You can look at the overall stat sheet of what the defense gave up and the yards and stuff. They gave up 20 points. I mean, that's the same that they allowed from Alabama. And when, you, when you're when you talking about the, the third down conversions with Texas being 9 of 17, I believe it was, giving up 9 of 17. Um, in the second half, I believe that they were 4 and 10 of, give, of third down conversions that they gave up. So really, it was a first half issue when UTSA was really kind of rolling a little bit. And let's be honest, when we look back at what Texas defense was last year, oftentimes they started games really strong, but then after halftime, it was like things, the wheels kind of fell off. This was the opposite. This was a defense that was giving up a lot bigger plays, more explosive plays, obviously like couldn't get off the field on third down in the first half. They made adjustments and then it, it changed it. Sure. Like the overall numbers really does not look great, but still 20 points. And then, and only three points in the second half. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so that, that just shows like that, that's a night and day difference from the defense that Texas fielded in 2021 and Steve Sarkeesian's first year. One thing that is interesting is Pete Kwiatkowski last season was in the booth, you know, and now he's been on the field for all three games of the season. And, and Steve Sarkeesian was asked what the, what prompted that. And Steve Sarkeesian is like, sometimes you just need to kind of have the feel for the game on the field. And I, a part of me is wondering if this is just that little tiny tweak of moving him from the booth down into onto the field with the team, being able to see exactly from the field, not from above. I mean, I feel like that could be just a tiny little tweak that could be crucial. Cause I feel like it's, it's showing up. It is showing up. And if, if they have halftime adjustments like this, that's you you couldn't ask for more if you're a Texas fan after last season. Well, the other thing to note is Gary Patterson cannot be up in the in the booth. Mm -hmm. And he, it, he doesn't but, wear a headset either. Right. He's on the sideline where he can communicate with Pete Kwiatkowski. He he can Gary Patterson could wear a headset if if they wanted to allocate one of the headsets to him. It cannot have a two way microphone. It right. can only be a listen. Now he doesn't wear a headset, but he is on the sideline and PK is on the sideline as well. They can communicate better. Steve Sarkeesian was talking about, you know, sometimes you got to look your players in the eyes and feel your players on the field. Um, but you're right. And, and look, you can talk about yards. You can talk about third downs, giving up. You can talk about, um, you know, some big pass plays here and there. And, but at the bottom line is UTSA had a 20 play drive to start this game. It took eight minutes and 27 seconds off the clock. And all they got was a field goal, right? You will take that every day. Yeah. And just like in the third quarter, 
they had the the time of possession in the third quarter, they had the ball for 10 minutes and 32 seconds compared to Texas offense having the ball for four minutes and 14 seconds, I think it was, in that quarter, obviously. And they only scored three points, too. Yeah. It's because Bijan was running 19 miles an hour down the field yeah. <laughs> on a 78 yard touchdown run and then hit him up for more. Yeah. But, but that's, that's crucial. I mean, cause if you, if you go back even last year, the time of possession differential and the losses that Texas had, Texas was one in seven last season in games where they did not control the time of possession and they were four and oh in games that they did. That is not a coincidence. It's like, I'll say it till I'm blue in the face and people are probably like, shut up Taylor. But the best defense is one that's not on the field. And when the defense has to be on the field extend, for extended drives like that, it wears them out. And UTSA obviously having the onside uh, kick that they recovered to put the defense right back on the field. What a you call. know, back. To, yeah, the great call for sure. But again, the fact that Texas in the third quarter, you know, the defense was on the field for 10 minutes and 32 seconds, they only gave up a field goal. That's that's a huge, huge, huge shift of what you saw from last year yeah yeah texas gets waxed in the time of possession game tonight 36 minutes um to 23 minutes and change but the big plays the um limiting utsa in the red zone the 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 pick six obviously um and let's give it up to uh special teams bird auburn two for two on his field goals including a 44 yarder and uh, our our man uh, uh, Trejo, yeah, Daniel Trejo, Daniel Trejo from uh, Texas Wesleyan, three punts, averaged forty five yards. Taylor, so special teams does it. And Keelan Robinson got his hand on a punt that still traveled thirty five yards, but uh, they'll probably give Keelan Robinson a block for that, uh, even though it didn't go backward and result in outstanding field position um keelan robinson still just being a menace to opponents on special teams and ran hard i keelan robinson is a fun dude to watch he he's is. only a junior taylor yeah yeah he's he's so fun and it's like what I, I every time i see him make a play i think back to what you know, we only get to talk to coordinators once before, once every year, pretty much is all we get. Well, we got Jeff Banks before the start of fall camp, and he talked about Keelan Robinson being one of the, like, the one of the, like, toughest and hardest hitting type of guys that's on special teams. And he's like, we can just set him loose because our running game is so good that we don't necessarily need to, like, treat him with kid gloves and the you know the event that he is going to like be hurt or something like that and they're not going to have running backs like and you've seen it like every time I see him make a play I'm like that's exactly what Jeff Banks was talking about that's why they let him loose and he he's a fun very you know uh tough hard nosed type of player and you, I mean you could just tell he loves the game of football too which always is fun um Chip before we continue this conversation we're going to take a really quick break but stay tuned because we have plenty more to digest from Texas 41 to 20 win over UTSA. We'll be right back. And if you're watching us on the Horns 24 seven YouTube channel, we will roll on here. Um, Chip. Taylor, what, I do want to say one thing okay. about our man Hudson Carr because um, gutsy performance, fantastic. Texas needed him uh, tonight and he came through, but the deep ball. Oh, good Lord. Um, so Xavier Worthy dropped one. He should have caught Hudson card badly missed Xavier Worthy on another one, but oh my gosh, he had Jatavian Sanders wide open in the middle of the end zone, waving his arms. And Hudson card was like the only person in DKR who didn't <laughs> see Jatavian Sanders. He ends up throwing a eight yard comeback route to Xavier Worthy. And you're going, no, <laughs> throw it to zero. Um, wow. Was that a, a tough one, but, um, obviously Hudson card makes up for it with that 32 yard run on second and 22, but something tells me Quinn Ewers would have, uh, had that ball in, in flight to Jatavian Sanders for, a for a quick six, but 
Um, the good news, Taylor, Quinn Ewers throwing before yeah. the game, no sling. Uh, Steve Sarkeesian talking about how much he's improved and it sure sounds like Quinn Ewers could be back way sooner than, uh, the typical timeline for that sternoclavicular sprain. Um, it sounds like he might be in the mix to go to Lubbock next week. We'll, we'll learn more early in the week, but, uh, that's really good news that Quinn Ewers is apparently made of polyurethane. <laughs> I mean, it's like what what we had um, Riley Dodge on on the podcast. I mean, he said like Quinn wasn't, you know, he had double hernia surgery. He was not clear or healthy to go. And he leads South Lake Carroll to the state championship game. You know, I mean, that's just he's I don't know what he's made of. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what is making him up to, to be able to do this. But that was very surprising to see him throwing, you know, throwing the ball at all. Now he did not throw it when the the team came out, you know, for like in fully dressed out or anything in, in the, the team like, warm -ups. Uh, yeah, the team warmups. He, he was not actively participating, which obviously we didn't expect him to play based off of everything that we had heard. Um, but still like he was out there before the team warmup started and was throwing it and throwing it well too. That's, I mean, that kid's a, a fighter for sure. He's tough as nails. I feel like Texas has two quarterbacks that are tough as nails that we've seen so far. And I, I'm, I, I still want to see what Malik Murphy is too. But these are two guys that if they're, if they're able to go, they're going to go. And they're not going to protect, you know, whatever it is that they may like or be afraid to, to put it all out in the line. And I feel like that's – it's almost like kind of what Texas had in Sam Ellinger, right? Like just – these guys that it's like they're warriors unless you like this forcefully tell them you are not going to take the field they're going to try to do everything to take the field and help this team and that's that's crucial and Texas has two of them so yeah. um it'll be interesting to see when Quinn Ewers does come back yeah well as we point toward Texas Tech and the Big 12 opener next week there's a lot to feel good about if you're a Texas fan. We just mentioned that Quinn Ewers is probably on a faster timetable than um, anyone suspected after the injury against Alabama. Uh, we talked about Hudson Card being a gamer and and having experience uh, playing on the road, uh, which is critical. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to have a redshirt freshman uh, uh, like Charles Wright getting his first taste of college football in Jones stadium in Lobotics <laughs> because uh, that's a different world out there, but there's a lot to be excited about. I mean, the quarterback play has been solid. The running back uh, position is loaded. The offensive line is holding up. It wasn't great tonight, but Hey, Bijan Robinson went off for 183 yards. Roshan Johnson averaged seven yards a carry. Uh, this offensive line is going to get better. And the receivers, you know, Xavier Worthy, Jordan Whittington. Um, we didn't see much from Casey Kane tonight. We need to see more from Jatavian Sanders. Guy's so good. Uh, but in this defense, answering the call, giving up another 20 spot uh, to a conference champion that won 12 games last year. Um, I just feel like Texas is starting to show us that uh, maybe they can play to their own standard. And Next week will be a whole new test, Taylor, but a lot of positives to take away from tonight. Yeah, there definitely are. And and I, I think that the key, uh, B. John Robinson, obviously, everyone expects him to be the best player on the field. Like, uh, you know, when the offense takes the field, you know who the best player is on Texas. The defense, I feel like they're then being able to, to fight back and just really come, you know, make halftime adjustments, things that people – question about Pete Kwiatkowski and this defense in 2021, you're not seeing that. And that's huge. Now you have to see it on the road because, you know, if, if your defense needs to travel, like how, how you will always say, I'm stealing your line there, Chip, but you're, you've got to see it on the road. Texas has not faced any road games yet this season. 
However, if, if that defense, there's no reason at this point to question it. And I am quite surprised that we're saying that, right? Like at this point, right. I mean, it was the biggest question going into that and the, you know, how the defense would be and how the offensive line was going to look with so many young players, including two true freshmen starting, including one at left tackle. I mean, my God, like that is, you know, you never know what you're going to get. And it just seems like the, the, He's both the best of those, lineman they have. Yeah. And they both Come continue back. to show up. Like you said, you know, the, the offensive line had not like they, ha- they weren't elite. I would say like today, but still you see, you see them getting better. That's all you can ask for when you have such a young offensive line. And then I feel like you're seeing the defense, even though yes, they gave up, what was it? 408 yards total. I think it was, or something like that um, to UTSA tonight. 20 points. 20 points. It's all the Three in the second know. half. Exactly. Yeah. 17 in the first half, three in the second. Halftime adjustments are actually showing up in a positive way and not against Texas this season on defense. Yeah. Texas wins the turnover battle. Texas has a zero in the turnover column. UTSA with the huge pick six interception uh, and two other fumbles that they were able to recover. Uh, but Texas with some some big plays on defense when they needed it most special teams, a plus and could be good quarterback news coming uh, for Texas. So um, there it is from Texas's 41 20 victory over an incredibly feisty uh, opportunistic UTSA team that uh, Man, did they execute their game plan in the first half and uh, the onside kick, the double pass touchdown, the 17-7 lead on Texas. Jeff Trailer was in it to win it. Lost another offensive tackle tonight. UTSA now has lost five offensive tackles for the season. Uh, that happened in the first quarter too. Uh, but um, amazing game, an amazing win for Texas. As we said at the beginning, this win is going to resonate. I think Texas fans need to feel really good about this win because they may not face uh, a quarterback as good as Frank Harris again. And yeah. I watched all the games in the big 12 this, uh, this weekend and I will stand by that. So for Taylor Estes, I'm Chip Brown. Um, until next time, we'll see you over at horns247.com. Thanks for listening, everybody. Stay safe and keep the faith.